Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews and today we're going to be taking a look at the FootJoy Pro SL BOA Spikeless Golf Shoe. Now in this video we're going to take a look at the BOA lacing system in a little bit more depth and we're going to have a recap on the shoe as well to let you know what's changed in the latest design and go over what's so great about this shoe. Um, so if you like this video, please hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe and ring that bell to make sure you get notified of my upcoming review videos. Welcome to Golf Guy Reviews and today we're taking a look at the FootJoy Pro SL. So we're going to start this video by taking a look at the BOA fastening system. Uh, now I'm a huge fan of the BOA system and if you've not used it before or come across it, uh, I think it's definitely worth a look uh, because initially you might look at it and think, well I've been tying shoelaces for years, I know how to tie my own shoelaces, you don't need to teach me how to tie shoelaces. And that's totally true. Um, but with the BOA system, once you start using it, what it gives you is such convenience and speed to which to you can make minor adjustments on the course if you want to, but also the speed and convenience of getting your foot to fit just right in the shoe each time you wear it. You put the shoes on, you give it a couple of clicks, and you're good to go. And I think that's it's so important, um, and, and it really I, I personally feel that the BOA gives me a better fit in this shoe uh, than the lacing version. But it might not, you might prefer the way that you tie the laces on your shoes personally. It's just personal preference. But what comes with the BOA system is convenience, ease and speed. So taking a look at the BOA in a little bit more detail for those of you who haven't seen it before, you can see that you've got the fastening system there right on the back. And all you do is you click it in and then turn it to the right. And as you turn it, it draws the laces in tighter across the shoe. And then to release it, all you do is pull it out, little click at the back there again, and then they're undone. You can get it nice and wide and as, as, as wide as you want. So you've got plenty of room, plenty of space to get your foot in there. They open up nice and wide. And then as I say, you click it in and you twist it to the right and a few turns and it's nice and tight. And as I say, what I like about it is that it secures right across the foot. So sometimes when I do my laces up and I'm in a rush, I'll tie them nice and tight right across the top and I'll leave them loose across the, the bottom of the shoe and that won't give me a secure fit. Whereas at least every time you use the BOA, you'll know you're getting a good lockdown lacing structure right across the shoe. And I think that's really great. And if anyone's worried about how strong these laces are that come with it now, these tiny laces are made up of 49 individual strands of stainless steel that are then woven together. So you're getting a really high quality, high strength material that's really lightweight and flexible as well. So it's nice and easy to use, it's secure, and it's gonna last. What I like with this BOA system as well, specifically on the Pro SL, is that I think it, it complements the look of the shoe. Some BOA systems can make it look a bit chunky and a little bit tacked on. Here, I think it's relatively subtle along the back. It's not sticking out too far, and I think it goes with the design and the lines of the shoe. Moving on from the BOA, if we take a look at the shoe in a little bit more detail, starting with the upper, you know, uh, this is a new design, uh, and to be fair, not too much has actually changed with the design. Uh, it was announced uh, in late 2018, it is now released. Uh, we've got slightly different colorways uh, to the sides, but the silhouette has remained pretty much exactly the same. Um, the boa has changed a little bit of the silhouette, but nothing drastic there, and personally, I think it complements it really well. Um, but we've got not got too much difference there. We've got a slight change of detailing on the tongue, um, and that's about it really when it comes to the uh, to the upper. Now the upper material still made from the chrome skin leather, uh, and it's really quite uh, it's really quite supple. It's very lightweight. Uh, it's 100% waterproof, uh, guaranteed for the first year of use. Um, and there, when when it comes to actually trying the leather on, I think it will take a round maybe maximum two rounds to fully break into how you feel comfortable with it. Uh, it's nice and soft. I will admit there are slightly softer levers out there, but it's a very comfortable lever. There's a good amount of giving it uh, right out of the box. Uh, and when you try it on, you know, there's not too much toe creasing there. Uh, not so much that it will make it feel uncomfortable at all. This is a very comfortable shoe out of the box, um, especially for a shoe that is looking like a slightly more traditional style golf shoe. Now, if you go for a trainer style shoe, if you go for something like the FootJoy Flex or something like the, the Puma Ignite NXT, then you're gonna get a slightly more comfortable shoe out of this box because it's a trainer shoe. There's absolutely no leather in it whatsoever. So there's no giving or no breaking at all. Uh, but for a fully leather uh, upper, uh, which is 100% waterproof, uh, then this is uh, about as good as you can expect really. 
You can see uh, the blue detailing we've got across the side, kind of like glimmers in the sun, which is, I think, a really, really good look just to have that little flash of color. Uh, and from the back there, you've got a little bit of detailing on the boa and the foot joy logo on the back. Um, and again, it looks like a good, nice silhouette that you've got from the rear of the shoe there. And on the inside, you've got some of the stitching patterns for the boa as well. This perforated leather just around the outside there, just a nice change of contrast in the textures that you get. But again, not too much has changed from the previous version, but that's okay because it's a damn good looking shoe. Moving on to the comfort and feel of the shoe, and the FootJoy Pro SL is pretty much the same as it was last year, and that's to say, is an incredibly comfortable shoe. Starting with inner sole, a lot of companies might just put a bog standard inner sole here, uh, but FootJoy have put quite a padded inner sole into this shoe. You can see here there's kind of detailing on the bottom of, uh, of, of, of extra thickness of the layers of the, of the foam on there, uh, and it's a nice perforated sole as well. You get some good perforation, so that's going to help with the ventilation of the shoe. But you've got a lot of these strategically placed extra thick padding sections, which firstly help with the comfort of the shoe. When you couple that with what FootJoy call their finely tuned foam, they've got two layers of that. So you first of all, you've got the gray layer, uh, which you can see at the top, and then it comes through the middle a little bit there as well on the shoe. And then you've got the thicker white layer of the finely tuned foam, which is a, a slightly denser, harder version of the foam. Put those two together and you've got an incredibly comfortable spikeless golf shoe. One that you're gonna be able to wear all day on the course and off the course, wherever you choose to, and you're gonna get no problems at all in terms of comfort. This is a real soft shoe, but it gives a lot of stability as well. So there are softer shoes on the market. If you're looking for something that's really squishy and really soft underfoot, you're gonna be looking more for an Adidas Boost type of midsole. But what comes with a foot joy is that it's soft, but it's not too soft if that's not what you're looking for, and it gives a good level of support as well. So with the full lever upper uh, and the structure of the Boeing lacing system and the structure of the shoe with the way that the heel count is set out, coupled with this soft foam that also gives a good level of support and stability, coupled with the traction that you get from the bottom, which we'll cover in a little bit, you get a really supportive, stable and comfortable shoe. Now I hinted at the traction earlier on that you get from the sole of this shoe. And when you take a closer look at it, you can really see why so many tour players and professional players are using this shoe uh, on the course week in, week out. Uh, because when it comes to a spikeless shoe, you're gonna struggle to beat a shoe for traction than the FootJoy Pro SL. If you take a look at the underneath of the shoe, what you'll find is that the whole of the sole is covered in these TPU spikes and they're distributed right across the sole of the shoe. So whether you've got your weight in the front or in the sides or at the heel of the shoe, you're gonna have some really great traction. And that's really, really important because there are some spikeless shoes out there on the market that have slightly rounder, slightly thicker, not as many spikes, and they are, they're still great golf shoes, but they are more in line with people who are playing on courses that haven't seen a drop of rain for weeks on end. Here in the UK, we're lucky if we can go a couple of days without seeing rain. Um, but what you do see is a lot of tour players using these in the UK, um, even when it's raining and when it's wet. So that speaks volumes as to how much traction this shoe is giving. Um, I think this is one of the best performing soles that I've seen for a spikeless shoe, um, and is gonna be really great out there on the course, whether it's sunny uh, or really hard, or whether it's raining and soaking wet. So with the shoes on, one of the first things you notice about them is actually how lightweight they are. They're not a heavy clumpy shoe and you're gonna be absolutely fine wearing these on the course all day. They're a nice lightweight leather upper shoe. The leather feels comfortable on, there's not too much creasing in the toe box and you can really feel the softness of the foam underneath. As I said, it's not the softest foam in, on the market, but it's certainly a very soft foam underfoot, and it's gonna feel a very, very comfortable shoe to wear. I'd have no problems wearing these all day for around the golf whatsoever. Sometimes I do struggle with my heels on golf shoes, and they rub against the sides, but in the Pro SL, there is no problems whatsoever, and there's a decent amount of room there, and my heels aren't rubbing at all. There's also a good lockdown feel in the heel of the shoe, doesn't feel like it's slipping at the back, and the boa lacing system, which comes right across, is giving it a real tight lockdown feel right across the whole of the forefront and the sides of the shoe as well. So overall, this feels like a really comfortable shoe. So should you buy the FootJoy Pro SL? Well, if you're in the market for a premium quality shoe that's gonna be giving you a traditional style look that's spikeless and comes with the convenience of the boa lacing technology as well, 
I don't think you can go far wrong than look further than the FootJoy Pro SL. I think that's a really comfortable shoe. It looks absolutely brilliant on the course, uh, is a traditional style shoe, is incredibly comfortable, is lightweight, is waterproof. What more could you ask for? I think this is a great shoe. Check it out. Are you using the Pro SL? And are you using a BOA lacing system? And would you go back to laces now that you've used it? I'm really keen to hear, so let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video, so please hit that like button and feel free to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be kept up to date on all the latest golf shoes, tech and clothing reviews that we put out on Golf Guy Reviews.